Have you started collecting your clear containers for winter sewing yet? If not, you should be, and I'm gonna tell you why. Wow, it is cold out here. And now that it's winter, there's not a whole lot we can do out in the garden, but we can start looking at our seeds and start planning what we're going to do in the coming season. Last week, you and I went through the Baker Creek seed catalog and I shared with you some varieties that had done really well for me in the past and some new ones that I plan on trying this year. So now that my order is in and I'm starting to plan what I'm gonna do with those seeds, it's time to decide what seed starting method we're going to use. Now, in the past, I have done some indoor seed starting, but currently I only use two methods to start my seeds, and that is either direct sowing out in the garden when the time is right, or using the winter sowing seed starting method. In this video, I'm going to share with you five reasons that I believe winter sowing is much better than indoor seed starting. So your first question might be, well, Steph, what is winter sowing? So winter sowing is the process of growing your seeds outdoor during the winter. You plant your seeds in recycled containers and then you put them outside in the freezing cold and in the snow. Now, what are these recycled containers? You can use anything, anything typically plastic and opaque or see-through. You don't wanna use anything that's solid because you need the light to get in. So I have some experience with both winter sowing and indoor seed starting. So just to give you a little background, I have been winter sowing and indoor seed starting since about 2016, 2017. Um, I wanna say that I started seed growing about 2016 and then I started winter sowing around 2017. And so I have a little bit of comparison between the two. Which brings us to point number one, it's less expensive. Why is that? Well, you don't need any type of grow lights. Um, grow lights can be as inexpensive or as expensive as you know, you want them to be. You can get something like a little floodlight at the home improvement store that will cost a few dollars. You can start getting those shop lights, the four footers that cost a little bit more, or you can start getting those really fancy light setups that can be very expensive. So you can go anywhere from a $50 setup to a $500 setup. So it just depends how much money you wanna actually invest into it. With winter sowing, you just need some recycled um, containers, which is also more sustainable and um, environmentally friendly. So that is one reason that I like winter sowing over traditional indoor seed starting. Reason number two, it saves space. So with um, a grow light setup, you need to find a place in your home that you're gonna have room to put these um, grow lights. So for me, I was growing them on a part of my kitchen counter. So um, it was okay for a little bit, but once the seedlings start getting big and you need to pop them up, I very quickly realized I was running out of grow light space. So that is one reason. Um, so if you don't have an adequate space to dedicate to seed starting, this is another reason why winter sowing would be ideal because with winter sowing, you're setting up your containers, you're putting them outside, and you don't have to worry about any space in your home. Reason number three, fungus gnats. Fungus gnats are a huge issue if you're growing seedlings inside. Um, the reason is because we have a tendency to continually water our seedlings, um, which causes other issues besides fungus gnats. You can start getting some mold growing um, and algae on your plants. You can also start getting um, some dampening off where, where your seedlings kind of die off from overwatering. And the fungus gnats are these annoying little, um, they're almost like fruit flies that start just flying all over your house. Um, you can get these little sticky traps for them, but doing winter sowing, you avoid that situation altogether. Reason number four, I love winter sowing. It's a very hands-off approach. So once I've created my containers and I put them outside, I don't have to water them and I basically don't have to worry about them. Now, there are some exceptions to that. If you have um, a stretch of dry weather, you might wanna just check, see if they need a little bit of watering. You know, you can use a watering can and um, kind of give them a little drink. But other than that, all you have to rely upon is the condensation that the greenhouse uh, will create and the elements, the snow, the rain, will take care of watering them. Also, the plants, you know, you don't need to pot them up. So if you start your seedlings indoors, there's going to be uh, at least one occasion where you'll have to pop them up, sometimes even two. And depending how early you start these seedlings, you might have to pot them up even a third time. So um, that's another reason I like it. Potting up is just the process of moving your seedling from the tiny little um, cell of that you started them in. And once they germinate and they start growing, they quickly outgrow that space. So then you have to put them into a bigger container. That's more soil, that's more containers, and that's more work on your part because now you have to keep moving them. Not only that, you very quickly run out of space um, under the grow lights 
once you start potting up. So that's another reason I really like winter sewing. It's a very hands-off approach once you put in the work to initially create your mini greenhouse. And reason number five that I really like winter sewing is there is no hardening off. Now hardening off is the process of taking your seedlings and over the course of a week, you have to bring them inside and outside. You know, in the morning, you'll put them outside and in the evening, you'll bring them back in and you gradually increase the number of hours that you put them outdoors. It's hardening off season. So I left these guys on the front porch for this afternoon. Um, they got a little bit of cool air and now they got some sun and time to bring them back in for the night. What this is for is so that the seedling, because you've been growing it inside under a very controlled environment, you need to give it time to acclimate to the weather outdoors. Now, this is a very time consuming process because like I said, it has to happen over a course of a week. So for a whole week, you're basically playing inside, outside, inside, outside with these seedlings. And then um, let's say you forget them. It's happened to me. You forget the seedlings outside. It gets really cold at night. They're not happy, they die. You leave them outside, maybe they get a little too much sun because uh, it was hotter than you thought it would be and you ran out to do an errand and they fry. So it's, you know, that hardening off process um, is, is again, very hands-on. And with winter sowing, your seedlings are already hardened off. They're growing outside in the elements, in the cold, in the rain, in the snow, in the sun. So they start getting used to the elements and they're a stronger seedling for it. You know, they're already growing in the elements. You don't have to do any of the hardening off, which to me is a huge win for winter sowing. I've accumulated a couple more um, milk jugs and water containers. So I'm now just pre uh, preparing a few more of these um, winter sowing jugs. So I'm just watering the water in because this will be the last time that I get them watered before they get closed up and the weather takes care of them. So next step, seeds, label, and seal them up. Good morning, garden friends. So it's a little chilly, but it's supposed to be a beautiful day today before we get some rain tomorrow. A look at all my um, winter sowing. And I'm happy to report that I finally have some activity. Um, let me find one. This is my bachelor buttons. Let's focus in on that. There we go. It's a little better. But there's a bunch in there. Um, some purple broccoli. Some parsley. That's pretty good. Kale. So I'm going to have fun trying to divide these, but I'm so happy at the germination on these. If you're wondering when to start winter sowing, all you have to do is go to Google and put when to start winter sowing and enter your gardening zone and you'll get some information or at least some general guidance about when to start. I'm in zone 6B and I start my winter sowing in February. I'll do some in February, some in March, and finally I'll begin my annuals like marigolds, zinnias, and cosmos in April. And that has worked really well for me in the past. Now there are some annuals and some perennials that do benefit from a longer season of cold. That is called um, cold stratification. So if you happen to have any of those seeds, you'll want to start them even earlier. A lot of people who winter sow start usually right after the winter solstice. And so your seeds will sprout when the weather conditions and temperature are right for them. So once you set them up, all you have to do is wait. Well, I hope that I've convinced you to try winter sowing if you haven't already given it a shot. It's a really great method and one that I really enjoy. So the first thing you'll have to do is start collecting some clear containers, some like these here from water or milk or even just some rotisserie chicken containers, whatever you can find as long as they're clear and have enough clearance for three to four inches of soil. So go ahead and get those collected. As soon as I start getting all of my seeds in and planning which will be direct sown and which will be winter grown uh, or winter sown, I will share that information with you so that maybe we can go ahead and grow some of these together. And I will also link below this video my uh, winter sewing playlist. I have a few videos that go over what supplies you'll need to winter sew, how to set up your containers, and so forth. So if you click on the more underneath the video, it'll drop down and I'll link my playlist for winter sewing there. I will also add it to the end screen, um, my winter sewing playlist. So take a look at those. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button and please consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my future videos and we'll see you soon.